Okay, to begin, we're going to go up to our toolbox. We're going to grab a Xam Doc Manager control and drop it under Application. Then we'll go in and actually remove some of the properties that we're not going to be needing. These are all generated by the designer, of course. Okay, now you'll notice that it is in uh, grid.column1 and the outlook bar is in uh, grid.column uh, equaling to zero. Okay, now that that's set up, we're going to begin by adding content to our doc manager control. So what we need to do here is take a look at the two key pieces to any docking environment. The first piece is the uh, panes that contain things like the toolbox or the properties grid or the solutions explorer. Those are actual panes that are floatable, they're movable, uh, they're pinnable, and they're collapsible. The second piece is the content area. Now the content area is the thing that you would normally refer to as a MDI type environment. Uh, it may host things such as um, a Word document or whatever it may be. So let's begin by adding some panes to our pane collection. So to do this, we're going to go over to our properties grid. We've got the Xam Doc Manager selected. We're going to scroll down to where it says panes and we're going to add a split pane. Now a split pane hosts other panes such as a tab group pane or a content pane and in this case it's going to help us decide where content is going to be positioned. Is it going to be positioned on the right, the top, the bottom? Uh, in this case we're going to position our content on the right hand side uh, much like what you see the property grid's location inside of my copy of Visual Studio now. So we'll set the Xam Doc Manager dot initial location to dot right. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the splitter orientation to horizontal. This just means that different content panes are going to be hosted uh, on top of each other with a splitter um, across the uh, horizontal axis. Now we'll add panes to this split panes pane collection. Let's begin by adding a content pane. This content pane can have a caption or a header of employee data. And we'll add another one with a caption of sales data. We'll hit OK. OK, so one thing that we can do here uh, just for the sake of this demo, is to actually set the width on our split pane to 250. And that'll make that fill up a little bit more of the screen real estate. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually add the content area, uh, what would be the tabbed MDI area. So let's go into our Xam Doc Manager and say IG Doc document content host and inside here we're going to add of course a split pane and then inside of the split pane we're going to add a tab group pane which is going to host a bunch of content panes in the format of tab groups So we will say IG doc content pane header equals SAM data grid G doc content pane header equals reporting. This of course will all be filled out later. Let's go ahead and make sure we have a name assigned for each of these. Let's see, content pane, SAM data grid. And, oops. Content pane reports. Now you can see that we have the content area set up and it's ready to be filled with content. 
But before we do that, let's actually focus on the end user customization. Okay, for end user customization, right now what we have is when we actually run this application, so we'll go ahead and build it. you will see that the end user has the ability to pick up items, float them, pin them in different locations, hide them, and essentially reorganize their uh, interface in whichever way they want to. Now, after they've done this, when they close the application and reopen it, everything's going to be back where it was as set up by the developer. So it's our goal to change that. Okay, after adding these two events, let's switch to our code behind and actually add some code that will actually load and save out uh, the end user's customizations. So to begin, we're going to add a using statement to system.io. Then we'll go down to our loaded method, add a try catch block. and then actually add some code to uh, load up that, that method. Okay, so let's add a file stream. There's a new file stream. We're going to pass it a string for an XML file. Uh, essentially, all of the end user customization will be saved out to or loaded from an XML file. file mode dot open since we're actually reading in this XML file and then file access will get uh, the ability to read and then from that we can say this dot zam doc manager dot load layout and pass it our file stream and essentially, that's it. You can, of course, catch any exception, um, file not found, or whatever it may be, and um, you know, either write out to an error log or whatever your, your internal plans are. Okay, the second part that we need to do is actually save the, uh, the layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the window closed event. We're going to add our try catch block. We're going to add a file stream. New file stream. Layout.xml. And in this case, our file mode will be to create and file access will be to write since we're actually writing out. Uh, then after that, same as before, this dot Zam doc manager dot save layout and uh, that should do it and with that we should be able to load and save uh, the end user customizations we can go ahead and build this be the end user and be able to pick up items move them around uh, perhaps pin one and have it collapse. Another interesting feature that comes built in with the dock manager control is the alt tab functionality or control tab functionality rather that allows you to uh, tab through the different uh, items. Okay so after we've done that let's go ahead and close this and we will run it again and if everything went correctly we should have the exact same layout that uh, was there when we actually closed it and as you can see it is we've got the thing pinned to the bottom and uh, the right-hand side uh, employee data has been collapsed. Okay, well with that, that concludes this session. Uh, the next session will be moving on to data visualization, so that will include the XAM data grid and the XAM chart. So join in and you can see 
the completion of the next segment of building a line of business application with NetAdvantage for WPF. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.